JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso recorded session with me, that is on the channel, because today's the 7th of March 2022. So welcome everyone, welcome to this um, Monday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, a um, quick mentioning of our JVD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JVD Bank website and specifically our JVD research page, which is also updated on a daily basis. So you have to check us out here on JVDBank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So now then, guys, um, so yeah. As I said before, this is a recorded session. Um, just kind of, uh, unfortunately, for this week, I it will have to be again in the same in the same format and as a, as a recorded one. So hopefully, hopefully next week we can, uh, you know, go in live again and uh, yeah, uh, have a more bit of a uh, more interactive session. So. At the moment, guys, yeah, let's uh, let's pick up on this. Um, and um, yep, I, I hope I hope you'll find this useful as well. So, uh, jumping into Nikkei 225. So, yep, uh, this morning we opened up and uh, we drifted heavily to the downside. Of course, the ongoing geopolitical tensions are not really uh, working out well here for the uh, for some of the markets. And uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so yeah, uh, I do apologize for that. Um, so yeah, um, it's not working out well for some of the markets and uh, yep, we can see that uh, Nikkei, for example, is drifting lower and it also managed to drop below the uh, the low of the 20th of November of 2020, which is roughly around that 25,425 zone. Um, we stayed below it and well, to be honest, now it looks like that this could continue escalating further, uh, further south now. And what I'm what I'm keeping an eye on here is something like this here is this level right there the 23,725 uh, this could be a good potential area of uh, uh, support um, previously it did act as a good area of resistance as you can see here after but but we on the um, the 6th of November we managed to pop above this barrier and then kind of travel higher right now we're kind of getting back to this level again um, so I would say that um, if we continue to trade below this um, steep up uh, steep downside resistance line and uh, don't get me wrong it's a little bit on the tentative side and if we do continue to trade below this steep downside resistance line taken from the high of the uh, 10th of February then yes of course we will continue uh, aiming lower guys for the upside we need to see a break of this downside line and a push somewhere um, somewhere above this little hurdle right here uh, this uh, 26,000 maybe zone um, and then yeah we could maybe pick up on a bit of upside however however um, we will be very careful for now and like I said we are keeping an eye on this steep downside line for now because that's it seems that that's what's kind of you know showing the uh, the kind of the real direction at the moment mm. Shanghai Composite, so also steep decline here, as you can see here, uh, strong uh, strong move lower, and we dropped below that 3,415 level. Now, I spoke about that area previously, and uh, yes, uh, now we're. it seems that we are, of course, on the good track to test the lowest point of January, near the um, near this 3,356 terror uh, six zone. If we clear that level, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low, and the next target could be somewhere around here in this, in these, uh, 
uh, in between these two levels, the uh, 3,312 and the 3,328. And then, yeah, we will uh, we will take it from there. So currently, I'm looking at this highlighted territory as the potential area of support. Uh, the reason why is because if we look at the broader picture, you can see that basically uh, we are kind of stuck here and in between uh, or should I say we are stuck here in this range still which as you can see here is roughly between these two highlighted areas um, now uh, which is roughly between the 3,312 and this 3,732 uh, 3, zone. Um, so again, we're approaching that lower point of the range. Can we actually rebound from it and kind of, you know, move back to the upside? Well, we'll just have to wait and see for now, guys. Uh, yes, we are aiming lower. Um, initially, I'll aim for that lowest point of January, and then I'll keep an eye on these and these two levels, the, the lowest point of um, July, of last year and the lowest point of March of last year as well so keep that in mind uh, the German index DAX guys so uh, yes um, not a not a pretty uh, picture happening here on DAX as well so uh, on Friday let's just bear with me one moment so yep on uh, Friday it closed near the uh, kind of the 13,094 uh, zone and uh, yep it um, kind of let's if we just take a look at what's happening here I mean you'll see that yeah um, we have managed to already reach some of these levels so let me just uh, uh, correct this a little bit um, another thing here to consider um, we need to uh, last since last time I spoke about this I mean I talked about this potential Fibonacci uh, idea here but I said that if we drop below this highlighted territory right there then well further declines are possible and well look at this I mean yes we dropped below this area and uh, uh, you can see that we made a move all the way towards this 13,868 zone. I spoke about that area. Uh, we managed to reach that. So, yep, good achievement here. Um, what's going to happen next? Well, again, uh, let's be very careful and probably let me just recycle some of these lines here. So, we managed to overcome this hurdle, the low of the 28th of January of last year. Um, and, uh, yeah, is this the lowest point of January? Let me just double check very quickly yes that is the lowest point of January of 2021 or in other words also the lowest point of 2021 we managed to overcome that and our next potential target here could be somewhere around here near the uh, psychological 13,000 mark however however if we take a look at the cash index guys well that one has dropped significantly and it's already uh, trading below that psychological 30 13,000 mark so uh, th this kind of makes us believe that well the declines are not of course uh, are not stopping here my next target it could be this 12,591 zone. As you can see, previously it acted as a good area of resistance. Mm, and now it is uh, taking a kind of a role of acting as a possible kind of support. Board. So again, let me just have a look here. Um, again, another potential target is the 12,370, but let's go slowly on this step by step. For now, I'm keeping an eye on this uh, 12,591 zone marked by the inside swing high of the 5th of November of 2020. And uh, yeah, and then I'll take it from there. For Again, at the moment, it's not looking very nice here uh, for the bulls. Um, in a way, like I said, given that we have dropped already below that um, psychological uh, 13,000 mark, well, um, like I said, my next target is the 12,591. For me to consider uh, the upside somehow on this, then, well, um, I would probably need to see maybe a push somewhere, uh, somewhere above this hurdle, somewhere right here, um, or even actually, I think this uh, 13,664 level. But to be honest, if we do eventually get some sort of a, a reversal day, um, then I'll, I'll start considering maybe a, a possible move, um, a possible move to the upside, but uh, or a bit of a correct 
correction to the upside at the moment um, it's not really looking good and if you remember by the way uh, a while ago uh, back in uh, February I talked about this idea here of a range of a double a double top and a potential head and shoulders pattern well again everything kind of worked out nicely here so everything worked out according to the uh, to the rules so yeah let's see now where we can find that potential good area of support like I said I'm keeping an eye on this um, on this hurdle here this 15 uh, 12,591 zone and also um, keeping an eye on that psychological 13,000 mark because um, it's very interesting to see uh, like I said if we can actually somehow climb back above it maybe but at the moment it's not looking very good here um, the same story uh, with um, the FTSE 100 and uh, yeah, the index, um, the index broke this upside line here, uh, taken from the low the first of December of 2020. So that means that yes, it it has opened the door, uh, the or should I say this has opened the door for a possible move further south. Now last week the index got a hold up near the lowest point of November here near the 6,989 zone, but. Um, I mean, looking at the cash index, we can see that, yes, it is continuing to drift further south. I think that we are somewhere near these areas here. Um, so 6,813, I think that's what we managed to reach this morning during uh, on the cash index. Uh, even actually, we dropped some some somewhat below it. Mm, let me just take a look at uh, this right now. So basically, um, let's put it this way. Um, for now, if the index continues to trade, below this 6,989 zone because I think that it's going to open up uh, below this but and uh, if it continues to trade below this hurdle my next target is the 6,813 level but if that gets cleared well uh, that's where I'm going to keep an eye on the low of the 25th of March of 2021 near the 6,618 level right there uh, so keep that in mind guys uh, so the S&P 500 so um, we continue to trade below that 200 day EMA and um, if you remember uh, when I was uh, well before kind of uh, you know jumping off here for a bit of a break I talked about this um, <clears throat> I talked about this idea where I said that the market needs a, a good correction here and well to be uh, to be honest I mean the current events are uh, helping that uh, situation unfortunately uh, like I said the, you know it's um, it's really sad of course what is happening because again this is um, you know it should not be like that but again you know it's uh, Let's keep uh, yeah politics out of these uh, webinars. But anyway, guys, uh, for now, looking at this uh, from the technical side, um, for now, looking at this picture, I mean, at the moment, it seems that yes, we are on that track to correct uh, at least that 20 20 percent um, at the moment at the moment I'm keeping an eye on some of these recent hurdles and to be honest let me just remove the Fibonacci for now because I'm just gonna uh, so that it wouldn't be in the way here with all the colors um, but what I'm gonna stick to um, I'm gonna keep this uh, highlighted area here this 20% uh, for now uh, that's kind of what's my target and uh, because it also nicely coincides with this uh, level here the low of the 25th of March of 2021 um, we're currently on the cash index we're sitting somewhere around that 4272 level uh, so we are basically uh, just kind of uh, near this hurdle here that's the lowest point of of October of 2021 guys and uh, in a way I mean if we continue to trade somewhere below this downside line I would say yes we'll continue targeting the downside and this downside line is taken from the high of the 4th of January now um, if we're looking at some potential further declines then of course that's yes, the, uh, the main target for now is the lowest point of February near the 4114 zone and then of course we'll take it from there but at the moment guys yes um, as long as I would say as long as we stay um, as long as we stay below this downside line then yes we will uh, we will continue aiming lower 
Um, so now jumping into DXY, the dollar index, of course, as uh, seen as currently as a safe haven, is uh, pushing nicely. And if you remember la uh, last time, kind of when I picked up on this one uh, a while ago, I mean, I was I kept on talking about this barrier here, this 96.30 zone. Uh, we managed to clear that, and we rushed further, uh, further north. To be honest, all this is kind of right now uh, pointing to maybe possible move towards that 100 level and uh, or maybe 101 zone um, of course like I said a lot of things to consider here uh, but we'll, let's go slowly on this mm, for now as I said I'm aiming for that 100 level and I would say as long as it trades somewhere above this territory right there let me just put this on the chart here guys um, so uh, let me just put this one right there. So if it stays somewhere above this 97.80 zone, yes, I'll continue aiming higher, guys. So keep that in mind. Um, for now, for now, um, I would say uh, be very careful, be very cautious. And of course, this is going to really uh, depend a lot on the whole geopolitical tension. I hope it improves because... Again, uh, it's not how it should be. I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of people suffering. So, um, so yeah, guys, at the moment, um, looking at DXY, at the moment it is acting as a safe haven. People are jumping into it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it might continue pushing further north. Um, and, of course, uh, some other currencies might continue, um, well, uh, might continue kind of devaluating against its uh, U.S. counterpart. Now, uh, jumping into gold very quickly um, so gold also exploded uh, or continues to explode to the upside let me just have a fresh look at all this because again let me just remove all the drawings um, and uh, yep we can see that we managed to overcome the uh, the um, the February highest point here near the uh, 1974 zone. So we managed to clear that level this morning um, and we continue to push further north. And most importantly, I think if that's not the... Uh, yes, we managed to hit the uh, psychological 2000 level, guys. Oh, there we go. So it's a historic... In, a historic um, event here. I mean, last time we were back and uh, we were hitting that uh, gold was hitting that 2000 level was back in, you know, in September 2020 and also not to mention August, July, August. So, yeah, uh, there's a lot to consider for now. Um, I would say uh, keep your eyes on the um, on some of these levels right here. So let, let me just grab the highest point of um, there we go. So there we go. So the highest point that we managed to reach here back in August of 2020 was at 2075. Now this is going to be quite an interesting um, thing to see if we can actually reach that um, highest point again of 2020. Well, at the moment, let's go slowly. Let's not over kind of, um, you know, over trade here, I would say. Um, there are there are a bunch of uh, there are a bunch of kind of levels to consider here higher. So my next target, for example, is if we do reach that a psychological 2000 level again, uh, my, and we don't, then we overcome it. My next target is the uh, 2015 level, which is uh, marked by the um, inside swing low the 7th of August of 2020 and is near the high of the uh, 18th of August, um, 18th of August of 2020. So, yep. Uh, for now, keep that in mind. Um, looking at this here again, um, I would say be very careful, guys. Um, for the downside, if you're looking for some shorts here, well, uh, you would need to probably wait wait at least a um, kind of a break of this upside line, the steep upside support line taken from the low of the third of February, and then we could yeah go for maybe for some for some lower levels. Uh, jumping into double. TI oil and that is just on fire guys I mean well uh, for obvious reasons of course for obvious reasons here right now the oil is exploding higher and this is just madness so let me just uh, so WTI oil today right now is already at 125 28 26 dollars per barrel I mean that is just insane guys I mean for that probably let me just jump into a monthly chart and uh, well this is what we are seeing right now 
look at this I mean this is just um, this is just crazy I would say I mean the the all-time high I would say was I think it well an all-time high what I have here on my historic data um, all-time high has been was at 147 level so 147 dollars and that was reached back in July of 2008 guys so it's basically um, this was the economic crisis that we had and to be honest I mean it's with how everything's developing it seems that it could be the case that you know we're kind of moving towards something like that again but um, yeah uh, if you were hoping for a market reset well I think that's what we're getting right now and looking at this I mean this is just pushing further north and uh, we managed to overcome the highest point of uh, 2011 here near the 114 15 zone managed to clear that level so I would say this way Looking at this monthly chart, if we continue to trade above this hurdle, this 115 zone, well, I mean, my next target is the highest point of uh, 2008, near the 147 level, and then we'll take it from there. If it somehow falls back below this 115 zone in a month, at the end of the month, maybe there could be a bit of hope here that we could see maybe a bit of a corrective move lower. However, at the moment, it doesn't seem to be the case. Now, um, jumping into, okay, by the way, let me just jump back into a daily chart here. Um, jumping into Bitcoin. So the crypto world is a little bit on the stable side. Of course, it's drifting a little bit lower due to stronger US dollar. But at least it's kind of, you know, um, kind of a little bit on the stable side. And uh, I think this is the moment for the crypto to show, you know, that it is, uh, it can be um, not as volatile as everybody's used to seeing it and it actually could be kind of a real asset you know to hold however at the moment if we take a look at this picture uh, yes we are still kind of on the positive side because um, although we are, we, we're seeing this one um, drifting lower right now we're seeing Bitcoin and some other cryptos drifting to the downside but let's say if we, in this particular situation and this particular scenario uh, Bitcoin is kind of oscillating so far around it's 21 day EMA so it's not really neither bearish nor bullish it's just uh, oscillating around the um, around its 20 day EM 21 day EMA um, if you're looking for some upside on this one guys I mean I do understand you're you know you're trying to kind of take advantage right now of the situation I, I get it um, but um, probably to be a little bit more on the safe side I would say if it if it pushes somewhere above this territory right there uh, this area uh, around the 40 uh, 5,900 zone if it climbs above this this may yes open the door towards some higher levels and then yes we could go further north for now um, I would say if you're you know if you're a little bit on the pessimistic side well then at least keep your eyes on the lowest point of February near the 34,425 zone and if we drop below this this would also mean that the um, the crypto has dropped below this upside line and then uh, yeah potentially further declines could be possible especially if it overcomes the lowest point of um, lowest point of January. Uh, now jumping into AUDCH Chef, guys. So um, uh, I've looked at this one previously, and well, finally we managed to break the downside line, taken from the high of the 18th of March here. And uh, yep, as you can see. It um, it did um, now kind of stay above this downside line. On Friday we had a break, a false breakout here, but it didn't really work out well here. But now we are seeing a further nice move to the upside. We have we're clearing some of these levels, like for example this 0 0.6813 zone marked by the high of the 16th of November. And uh, yeah, I would say um, I would say it's looking quite interesting here. Um, and I would say yes for now. I'm bullish on this and I'll continue aiming higher and uh, well my next target is the highest point of October of uh, you know the highest point of October of 2021 near the 0 0.6933 level this is what I'm going to be aiming for and like I said this is what was going to be my next target if the pair continues to trade above this downside line
uh, USD CAD very quickly on this one. Um, so yeah, um, it's still stuck here. I mean, it's a bit of um, a battle here of this of, of of you know of the two strong currencies. Um, Canadian dollar is pick is picking up the pace due to rising oil um, and or should I say it's remaining on the stronger side due to rising oil and US dollar is also um, is kind of keeping its strong position. It, it's it's keeping the strong position uh, due to acting as a safe haven you know and at the moment I mean I'm, I talked about this kind of little range here um, it did kind of uh, it doesn't look very well anymore um, and uh, yeah uh, I would say if you're looking for some um, if you're looking for some upside uh, then probably at least wait for maybe a push above this barrier somewhere around here this 1.2814 zone um, so yeah, um, it, that's probably a little bit on this. This could be this could be the safer bet, um, but at the moment, guys, it's just neutral. Um, it's just oscillating around that 21-day EMA, not doing much. So I'm just observing the price action and we're keeping an eye on some of these levels. Now, uh, US dollar against the Russian ruble, it is just non-stop, guys. I mean, this is I don't know. I mean, this is insane. Look at this. Look at this move. 133. Um, rubles for one US dollar and this is just non-stop to the upside I I don't know I mean of course you you could have you could have expected that I mean with uh, you know with the actions that were taken um, by you know by Russia so I mean this is just it's very difficult to find a ceiling on that one for now um, it could go even further north but yeah at the moment I mean if you remember I mean we were still let's say um, back in January we were somewhere around here uh, near this $80 mark on the uh, on the you know on the USD rube uh, the USD rub uh, pair and now we're just 133 I mean this is just explosion to the upside of course if something stabilizes, if something, you know, kind of they, they manage to reach some sort of a consensus, a deal, then maybe this could, uh, yes, uh, this could maybe sort out itself a little bit. I mean, we could maybe see a bit of a corrective move back down. However, at the moment, um, it's very uh, difficult to um, kind of, you know, go that way I would say or let's say consider that scenario at the moment is just one-way traffic yes at one point maybe this could correct a little bit lower but it doesn't seem that it could be the case now uh, GBP USD so so this one's drifting nicely to the downside um, let me I will also uh, remove all the drawings this is what I talked about previously I said oh and just let me probably pick up on this so what I said that if we break this upside line and we drop somewhere below this 1.3491 zone, then yes, I'll aim for lower levels. But initially, I'll aim for that um, 1.3358 zone here, somewhere around here. Um, we managed to reach that, so that's good achievement here. Now, probably let me just have a fresh look at it. So, as you probably can see clearly, we are now approaching this um, this area right here, the lowest point of December near the 1.3161. So, if we clear that level, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, my next target is going to be this one right here to 1.2854 and then we will take it from there guys I mean I do understand it could be quite a significant significant drop but to be honest at the moment we're not really living through uh, simple times or usual normal times uh, Euro Aussie now this is just con it, it continues to drift lower look at this move guys I mean um, wow I mean this is for now this is just one-way traffic it we're trying to find a, fl uh, a floor here somewhere but it is difficult to uh, do that um, and uh, for now if we go back into history I mean we need to go all the way somewhere back to this to 2017 guys so let me just re recycle some of these lines one of the levels that I'm keeping an eye on of course is this this lowest point of July of 2017 and that's roughly around that 1.4425 zone and then yeah we will uh, we will take it from there um, 
looking at this level here, uh, this is where we are kind of uh, at right now. That we're near that uh, 1.20. Uh, uh, sorry, the, the low of the 27th of July 2017 at 1.4566 zone. This is where we found support, as you can see here mm, today, this morning. That's what we've re we've tested. If we drop below that hurdle, as I said, yeah, that's what I'm going to aim for. I'm going to aim for that lowest point of July and uh, of the 2017, and then we'll take it from there. Um, for the upside, by the way, um, it's at the moment it's uh, it's a little bit tricky here. We guess we're getting that little correction. Um, I would say if you're looking for maybe something like a bigger correction, it, because it is very tempting right now to maybe to go long on this little bit to capture maybe a bit of a swing back up. However, um, one thing that you can keep an eye on here is maybe the current high of today, uh, this 1.4867 zone, a nice good push above it. Maybe yeah, this is what could lead to a bit of a a bit of a larger correction to the upside and finally euro usd guys um so yep um here you can see that yes the same story continues we are continuing to drift lower let me remove all the drawings um one thing for sure what's working out here is the fact that i said that if we drop below this lowest point of january near the 1.1121 yes this could open the door towards lower levels it did so and my next potential area of support here um, which actually actually it is right here the low of the 25th of May of 2020 and uh, yep as you can see here um, we're currently resting we did break below it initially but we're currently resting on it if we drop again below that hurdle what I'm going to aim for is probably somewhere around here, the low of the 24th of April of 2020, and uh, which is near the 1.0727. And uh, yep, if we drop below this and we stay below this, then like I said, my next target is at 1.0727. Um, and then we will take it from there. For now, it's a bit of a tricky one here. Um, for the upside, probably um, I would need to see maybe a break of this steep tentative downside resistance line first and then yeah maybe then we could consider a bit of a move up uh, to the upside however at the moment um it well it's not really uh, looking very positive. So guys, mm, that's it for this session. This was a recorded session. So yeah, once again, I do apologize for running those as recorded. Um, unfortunately, um, for this week, uh, we will stay with the recorded videos. Um, and uh, yep, uh, I'll try to resume with the um, with the live session on, uh, well, in the, on Monday next week. So for now, have a great trading day, guys. Stay safe, you know, in general, be very careful with the market right now. It's uh, it's it's a bit on the crazy side. Of course, yes, it does provide some good opportunities. However, uh, due to increased volatility in some instruments, um, yes, uh, you know, have your stop losses in place, and everything will be fine. So, thank you very much, and bye bye.